Hello everyone. Well, we've had a torrential rain all day yesterday and I'm out to just kind of inspect. And I am very aware this garden has got away from me. It's a wild garden now. And um, funnily enough, the other day I went to do some macheteing to clear a path to the bees. And we were really fortunate that we, we actually had a swarm from somebody and I was able to capture it. So we now have two hives at this moment. So that was great to have that opportunity to catch a swarm as a beginner. But um, yes, the garden is definitely a wilderness these days, so I'm going to have to get straight onto it now as we're going into autumn. But I've also realised there's just so many flowers. Despite the fact that we've had a very dry summer with lots of grey skies, there are just so many flowers everywhere. They're really brightening the place up. And um, that means lots of harvesting at the moment. So you can see the calendula is stunningly beautiful there and there's more in the other garden but um, as I'm wandering around looking at all the plants that are ready for harvest the meadow sweet the calendula the buddleia I mean there's a list as long as my arm so you can't do it all at once because you have to be sensible and do what you can manage at one time so today I'm just going to focus on the self-heal so this is self-heal and um, I have another great big patch just through there. So I'm collecting this today and I'm going to make a tincture with it. And I'll tell you a little bit about it as we're going around. But one of the great things about the garden returning to wilderness, except that now it is rich with all kinds of diverse plants, is that it's really beneficial for the bees. So many flowers giving them pollen and nectar and such a variety. And it's not just the ones I've planted, it's all the others that are naturally here, like the, like the self-heal. You know, when you meet a plant for the first time, you fall in love with it. And this was one of the first plants that I kind of consciously fell in love with. Self-heal, it's one of my personal plant allies. And I think it has the potential to be everybody's plant ally because it is so, it is so holistic. It, it works on mind, body and spirit. And um, I've seen absolutely amazing results with the flower essence, just with the flower essence. It's used in different ways in the West compared to China. We like to get it when it's in a fresh flower state and we use it mainly for wound healing and for the throat. But in China, I believe, they take it when it's more, kind of just past it. It's just beginning to brown and they use it for the liver. Come on, dogs, come on. So there's another beautiful patch just here. As you can see, it's in a very shady patch here as opposed to the more sunny patch back there. So it pretty much grows everywhere. It's very happy to be in meadows and fields and damp spots and dry spots. You know, I found it on the driveway as well, you see, in the gravel. It's so beautiful. It's, it's so luminous here in, the, in this um, shady place. It's gorgeous. It's like a jewel. You know when you read the fairy stories and the, the good girl of the sisters walks along and jewels spring up under her feet? I always think it must be the flowers, it's not jewels. Because the, the wild flowers just look like rubies and emeralds and amethysts and all kinds of diamonds and I don't know, I'm not up on my jewels, but I'm up on the wild plants. And this patch is growing right next to Herb Robert, which I talked about a few weeks ago. So if you're interested in Herb Robert, go and have a look at that one.
So I have a little bunch of self heal here and um, I think it's enough just to make a small tincture probably too much but I want to dry some anyway so that's fine so it is one of those little wonder herbs because it is it's self heal so it's telling you that you can heal yourself using this plant and it's specifically used for wounds and injuries and bleeding so if you look at the little flowers they are kind of sickle shaped so that's um, a kind of indicator if you imagine in the past most people were using tools in their daily work so sickle wort is one of its folk names and you can see in the flowers that it's kind of sickle shaped so it tells you you know again using a sickle you are liable to injury it's also known as carpenter's herb again because carpenter's tools can be sharp and you can end up with an injury so this herb would be used you just grab it you crush it you put it onto the wound it stops the bleeding it prevents infection and um, it will heal the wound very quickly so as Culpepper said, you know, you don't need any fancy physicians if you have self-heal because you can do it yourself. And it's also known to be very good for uh, it, these days. Well, even Culpepper knew it, actually. He talks about ulcers that might be inside or outside or even in the private parts. So we know that today it is effective against the herpes virus, which can produce ulceration in those places. If you look at the flower, it also looks like somebody's opened their mouth, put their tongue out and is saying, ah, as you do when you're getting your throat inspected. And sure enough, it's a plant that has a great affinity for the throat. So if you have a sore throat, if you have tonsillitis, if you have any kind of inflammation or problem with the throat, self-heal is your man. In days gone by, when sore throats were maybe more common, or at least more was made about them. Um, it was a, a sore throat was referred to as quinsy. And sometimes your throat might feel as if it's closing up, like diphtheria even. And so self-heal would be very beneficial as a strong tea and as an ointment on the exterior to relieve those throat conditions. And to make your tincture, we're just chopping it up very finely. So I'm just gonna snip the flowers off. According to the herbalist uh, Julia Bruton Seal, she says that there's been further research done into, uh, into self-heal in terms of the throat area because it's being shown to help people with thyroid issues as well. So 
I have a jar full of self heal, which is its Latin name is Prunella vulgaris. Now it does look very similar to Bugle and Bugle does have similar properties. So you could actually combine them if you wanted to and make a more potent healing. So I'm making a tincture specifically to take for, um, you know, sore throats over the winter to reduce fevers, to help with colds and things. And, um, I have some left that I can draw, I can infuse in oil, exactly the same technique, chop it up into a jar, only instead of covering it with alcohol or apple cider vinegar, if you don't want to use alcohol or glycerin, if you want to make it for a child, there's many ways to make tinctures. In fact, I've done many videos about tincture making and I'll put up um, a link up here so that you can have a look at those as well. So it's the same technique, we're infusing the herb into a medium. In this case, I'm using alcohol, I'm using vodka. But it could be apple cider vinegar, it could be glycerin, it could be oil. And when you have it infused in oil, you can use the oil as it is, or you could go on and mix it with beeswax and make it into a, an ointment or a balm. And it's that simple. I'm just letting the bubbles have a chance to come up to the top. But as I mentioned earlier, um, I found self heal to be an absolutely amazing flower essence because then you are actually healing all because remember its other name is all heal. So it's a very holistic plant in that respect that it will work on your spiritual emotional body as well as your physical body. So um, if you're interested in making flower essences, I've just put a course on the website that you might be interested in. So take a look at that as well. So that's it. That's my self heal made. As I said, it's one of the first plants I fell in love with. It's one of my plant allies that I work with. And um, every time I see it, I just feel so grateful because it's apart from its beauty, it just does so much to heal us. And, you know, when we talk about healing these days, we don't just mean the people, we mean the community, we mean the planet, we mean the plants and the animals and everybody. So, you know, you could even make a strong tea with self-heal and use it, um, dilute it down to water your plants and maybe just you know, have a bud to dip into the water and bless your land with it as well, so that there's healing everywhere. Um, it's, I think it's, it's so profuse this year, it is certainly telling me that healing is needed and it's here to help us to do that. So I hope you can find some in your area. And if you do, I hope you make many a wonderful medicine with it. So I'm going to take this into the house and set it off drying and see you next week. I hope you enjoyed today's film. If you did, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And have a look at the website danusirishherbgarden.com for more information about us and about the herbal medicine courses I offer and the Wise Woman Way training. And if you go to the shop, you can find the books, the weed handbooks and other herbal goodies. And remember, we put a new film out every Sunday. So looking forward to seeing you next week. Mm -hmm.